Okay, you look here. Welcome to Grung TV, the entertainment hub for news, views, reviews, and gossip. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your notification bell. A control now this a place that you look at. Look at What has been happening is that from Thursday to Sunday, warders have been patrolling in the night. That's the only operation they carried out. Every hour and the hour. They came first 7.30, then 8 o'clock, then 8.30, then 10 o'clock, then 11.30, then 1 o'clock. You understand? That's how they're the patrol period. But we'll listen to what they're doing. When they're patrolling on the sections, the security sections mostly is what they patrolled on. They're walking the sections with firearms. And if they see an inmate inside the cells with a cell phone, and they request the cell phone, and the inmate decide to take his chip out of the cell phone before granting them the phone, they open the cell and they beat the inmate. The inmate would not retaliate because of the fact that we are seeing guns. You understand? Because if the inmate retaliates, then they're going to shoot him and say, escape, much escape, because a warder blatantly came on one section and tell that to a prisoner. You get what I'm saying? So it's not like, yeah, they found cell phones. That's all, that's the only thing they found, cell phones, over the Christmas weekend. But I'm saying even yesterday, two inmates fighting, and one running towards the patrol office for rescue. And whilst he was running towards the patrol office for rescue, one of the patrol warders, a young warder, under the supervision of staff officer Walfall, kicked down the, 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 the inmate, blast his whistle, and then if, you, if anyone if you understand about the prison system, you know, from the warder, blast his whistle, crowd, a lumber truck that come down on you. That's when now, they start beating the inmate with them two and broke. Some of them has been on, the, on here last night talking about there's no food strike in the prison and talking about how inmates, inmates and inmates hurting each other and nothing like that. No inmate fighting up, no inmate that broke up, no inmate and in the prison. At three days now we're on food strike in the prison. Three days we're on food strike and we're intending on going on it today again. You understand? So don't make some of the company TV come talk no garbage about none because some of them not coming inside the prison, he's not here. All he's trying to do is paint a blatant image as though, okay, they are doing this and they are doing that. You understand? Coronavirus is out there. Probably parole officers coming in the prison, probation officers coming in the prison, Caribbean search him coming in regular in the prison. They are the ones with corona. We are not entitled to visits. We cannot get our visits. So if we can be getting these regular rigid search, and if Caribbean can be coming in the prison, and if other persons from outside can be coming inside the prison, why can't we get our visits? The talk shop is stuck every Tuesday and Friday. So that's coming from outside, so why can't we get our visits? That's what we need. We need our visit because we cannot sustain ourselves around here from the one fab and the one soup in the maguey per, per month. One month of soup and a pack from philosopher. That can't work. You understand? We need toiletries. We need what we need. We need things around here the very same, and they are preventing that from happening. It's only special persons they oblige to see and get visits. You understand me? So it's only special persons get special privileges because they might know persons in standing that have money. Stand Up For Jamaica says it is disappointed that inmates were allegedly subjected to abuse during the Christmas period. The organization notes that inmates are under extreme pressure since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. The human rights group says inmates are being isolated from their family members. Stand Up for Jamaica says its attorney visited the institution yesterday and today. According to the human rights group, its attorney collected several reports from inmates at the facility. The prisoners reported being beaten by warders. They also allege that their personal belongings were destroyed. Stand Up for Jamaica is calling on prison officials to remember the rights of inmates. The organization wants swift action to be taken against correctional officers who've been involved in reports of abuse. The SUFJ says it has also contacted Indicom to look into the matter. Meanwhile, in a media release this afternoon, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of National Security, Senator Matthew Samuda, describes the allegations as rumors. Minister Samuda says he has instructed the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Correctional Services, Dr. Mark Thomas, to look into the matter. He explains that members of Indicom and the Office of the Public Defender will be invited to undertake independent investigations. What took place from there to now was that we would have done a home assessment, visited the location where grandmother and aunts are living, do an assessment to make sure that the home environment is suitable. So we look at the community, the volatile area, we look at um, the sleeping arrangements, we look at if the child was to be enrolled in school, how is it that he would be transported to school, as well as other siblings. And so all of what we would have looked at was favorable. So we would have made the case to say, okay, it would be the best option for this young boy and his siblings to be placed in family settings.
So in this case, the home arrangement is suitable and so that's the placement. But um, when the matter was brought before the court, grandparents and aunts were given a fit person order that they are now the legal guardians of the children. As it relates to mother, our understanding is that the police would have dealt with that element of it. She was arrested and charged, but I understand that she's now on bail. Can't say much about that, but um, we are still following up where that is concerned. Our last check with this young boy is that he's doing very well. His siblings are also doing well. They have settled in. The next action for the agent is to ensure that we are doing the follow-up visits to the home to make sure that the placement is going well and there's no breakdown out there any needs of the family. So, of course, we have to look at the parenting sessions that need to be held. We have to ensure that we go through interviews with the children to make sure that if they're having any challenges, those are things that they would communicate to us, and we work with the family to see how best we can facilitate or help, you know, whatever situation there is. We are the ones who are supposed to be protecting our children, ensuring that they are safeguarded from harm. And those things have to do with chemicals, you know, such as alcohol and smoking. So it's important that we're reminded of that. If we see that, you know, situations of that nature happening in communities with a neighbor or down the road, it is important that we make the report. It is important that we have a conversation with family members to see that this is not right. You know, our children have rights and that is definitely not what needs to happen.